Martha Wise entered the world in 1883, born to Sophia Elizabeth Gianc and Wilhelm Carl Hassel, farmers from Hardscrabble, Ohio. Alongside Martha, the family welcomed three siblings, Frederick and Paul, as well as a sister named Emma. In 1906, Martha encountered Albert Wise, significantly older than her, at a box social event. Despite their union, Albert overlooked providing Martha with a wedding ring. Their marriage, unfortunately, was far from joyful. Martha transitioned to Albert's 50-acre farm, but soon realized that he envisioned her more as a farmhand than as a companion. Life as a married woman didn't alleviate the poverty she experienced when residing with her parents. Even during pregnancy, Martha was compelled to perform traditionally male farm tasks such as plowing fields and tending to hogs alongside regular household chores. Their first child, Walter Austin, didn't survive infancy, yet they were blessed with four other children, Everett, Gertrude, Kenneth, and Lester. Amidst these challenging times, Martha sought solace in attending funerals. Her attendance at nearly every funeral held in or around Hardscrabble, whether or not she knew the deceased, became a regular diversion. When asked, she simply expressed an affinity for funerals. The unexpected death of Albert in 1922 left Martha a widowed 40-year-old with four children. Her behavior, already somewhat peculiar due to her fondness of funerals, became more conspicuous. Not only did she continue attending funerals, but she openly wept and mourned at these events, regardless of the deceased's identity. Within a year after Albert's passing, Martha found companionship in Walter Johns, employed as a farmhand on a neighboring property. However, the relationship drew disapproval from Martha's family, particularly her mother Sophia and her aunt Lily Jank, both openly expressing their wish for Martha to terminate the relationship. By the close of 1924, Martha yielded to their pressure, leading to the end of her association with Johns, who subsequently relocated to Cleveland, leading to a loss of contact between them. On Thanksgiving evening in 1924, several family members fell ill with a severe stomach ailment, including Martha's mother, Sophie. While most recovered swiftly, Sophie's condition deteriorated, resulting in her passing on December 13, 1924. The onset of the new year brought further illness. Lily Jank, her spouse Fred, and multiple of their children began experiencing similar stomach pains to Sophie's before her demise. Numerous family members were hospitalized, and tragically, both Lily and Fred succumbed by February 1925. In total, 17 relatives suffered from similar symptoms during the fall and winter of 1924 and 1925. Additionally, four of the Jiang children were left partially paralyzed by the unknown ailment. Following the Jiang's deaths, authorities initiated an inquiry into the series of fatalities. County Sheriff Fred Roshan led the investigation and unearthed evidence suggesting Martha's involvement. Records from a local drugstore revealed Martha's purchases of substantial amounts of arsenic. Subsequent autopsy results on Lily verified the presence of arsenic in her digestive system. When summoned for interrogation by the sheriff, Martha initially asserted that she had procured the arsenic to eradicate rats. However, she eventually admitted to using it to poison her family members by lacing water buckets and coffee pots with the deadly substance they consumed. Despite admitting to the crime, Martha entered a plea of not guilty to the charge of murdering Lily during her appearance in front of the grand jury on March 23, 1925. During her testimony, Martha revealed an irresistible attraction to attend funerals and confessed that when there were insufficient funerals in the community, she felt compelled to create them by resorting to killings. Subsequently, Martha was indicted on a first-degree murder charge on April 7, 1925. The murder trial commenced on May 4, 1925, with Joseph Pritchard serving as Martha's defense counsel, while Joseph Seymour prosecuted the case. The defense contended that Martha was criminally insane and suggested her former lover, Walter Johns, had instructed her to carry out the murders. The defense faced several setbacks, including the May 6th suicide of Martha's sister-in-law, Edith Hassel, and the subsequent illness of her husband, Fred Hassel, both of whom were anticipated to provide testimony in support of the defense. Additionally, a man named Frank Metzger recanted his testimonies, stating under cross-examination by the prosecution 
that he had been asked by the defense to lie about Martha's mental state. Martha chose to take the stand in her defense. Testimonies against her were given by family members, including her son Lester and three of the Jinx's children. Following just one hour of jury deliberation, Martha was found guilty of first-degree murder. The jury appealed for leniency in sentencing. Consequently, the judge sentenced Martha to life imprisonment, stipulating that she could only be released through executive clemency. In 1962, due to Martha's exemplary conduct behind bars, Governor Michael DeSalle reduced her sentence to second-degree murder, leading to her parole at the age of 79. Unfortunately, Martha's surviving family members declined to offer her a place to stay, and several elderly care facilities also turned down her residency request. As a result, within three days of her release, Martha returned to prison as she had nowhere else to go. Her parole was revoked along with the commutation of her sentence. Martha continued to remain incarcerated and passed away in prison on June 28, 1971. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing by clicking the red subscribe button below. And don't forget to ring that notification bell so you never miss an update. Your support means the world to us. Please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.